the continuous, subtle confirmation of a lie. I'm going to make a brief comment, something that I've been thinking about in terms of well-meaning people even that have contributions to make to understanding of the world around us. Hello YouTube and BitChute friends. There are many people that, many is relative, but people that I listen to, people who expose the sinister aspect of our of our reality, the mucky fucks who definitely exist. History is basically a record of the mucky fucks getting always what they want. I'm, I, I will just even refer to the idea of a war. A war has nothing to do with a person, me personally. A war is like a generic tribal expression of hatred or something that is conjured in oneself to find fault to the extent and another to the extent of wanting to kill them. I mean, how, how bloody outrageous. If somebody is, for whatever reason, without being aggressive in their fault, let them be in their fault. Let them exist in their fault. So history is a record that confirms the mucky mucks, the mucky fucks who get into our business. And this is something that has been explained even through art. If you look at uh, Ruben's painting of Saturn devouring his children, or even better, <laughs> Goya, Goya painting. I should actually edit this in. I'll, I'll edit these two paintings in Goya. Goya's representation of Saturn eating his children is uh, uh, the next level up of understanding how the uh, mucky fucks affect us in the most brutal and uh, sinister manner. But the subtle confirmation of a lie is a very insidious development as I see it. People that, like I say, have a wonderful insight into certain aspects of the real world, but in exposing it also confirm the opposite. And I'll give you, I'll give you the best example of this. And I think it probably applies to other circumstances as well, where a lie is subtly confirmed. Of course, the, uh, the hero in this is uh, Goebbels, who said, if you repeat a lie long enough, uh, people will eat ultimately uh, accept it and believe it. Some of, I don't know who said, the bigger the lie, the easier it is to convince people of it. But the, the, the subtle confirmation is even with people that are really, for example, I, what was I listening to? Uh, I was just looking at, I, a friend of mine sent me this extended interview, COVID hacks your brain enslavement through AI with Karen Kingston. Yeah, yeah okay, fine. So these people, well-meaning people, and in their title, they have the C. The C of the shit show. And I know people that I have talked to uh, who are, they're not necessarily ambivalent. I think they're even committed to the idea that governments still love us so much they want to help us and keep us safe and all this sort of story thing that goes in people's brains. I don't know how that actually works, considering how sinister, it's, like I said, history has shown that uh, authority create tribal, tribal, rely on tribal instincts to uh, get us into situations that have nothing, have no significance or meaning to us personally, other than complete their devious plans of uh, getting us, I guess, complicit in, in, I don't know what for, I, it, it just, it, they have fun, I guess. So the insidious part of this, or this, this kind of propagating of a lie, even though you're exposing the sea, and this is quite subtle, this is subtle, and it, it, it's been bothering me, and I think I've mentioned aspects in other videos I've done, 
the subtlety is in actually referring to the beer virus with the name they've given it in titles. And I understand you want to make sure people are locked in to the wisdom and brilliance of your presentation and what it is you're talking about is the beer virus. So you're going to you're going to put it in your title and then make reference to the way I do. Notice that I, I dislike using their C. I prefer to call it the beer virus. You need to ridicule. This is something that comedians understand. Someone like who I listen to, the uh, the Owen Benjamin character, other other comedians as, uh, as, as well, who are very good at what they do, like Lenny Bruce, who exposed the entire uh, hypocrisy of uh, the Catholics, religions uh, in general, I think, but he picked on the Catholics. It was brilliant. Uh, they, they killed Lenny Bruce because uh, he was a threat through his comedy because he actually got through to people by ridicule. People kind of absorbed and uh, integrated this uh, this understanding, the wisdom he passed on through his comedy, and he became such a threat that they had to kill him. The government, the government killed him. You know, they had him. They had him over a barrel, and uh, he became absolutely depressed about the the struggle to maintain himself in a system that was uh, fundamentally uh, opposed to his 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 entire being. And he was no angel, but. Uh, uh, check out Lenny Bruce and his comedy. So the subtlety of confirmation is on a certain level quite disturbing. When you think of yourself as being informed and understanding how the world works, people who represent um, insight, people who have insight, people that I rely on and listen to to give me information, if, I, if I'm unable to make this distinction about the irony of confirmation in the story they're telling me. And I consider all things to be stories until I verify them within myself. And the story that we're supposed to repeat as often as possible is the beer virus story, whether it's exposing the fraud or whether it's uh, analyzing the, uh, the nefarious part of it the fact that we still refer to the existence of a beer virus rampaging through our china shop is a is a subtle confirmation of the lie so the the question in my mind is how one how one is able to undermine challenge expose all these sort of noble noble uh, desires um, without using the man's story. I don't know how far back uh, I might go on, on, on this where I talked about coming up with their own story. The idea that, uh, that, that people who have a gift, a gift to be able to like I said about comedians who are able to ridicule the bastards, uh, laughter and, and, and ridicule is a fabulous way of uh, getting people on your side, especially if what you're ridiculing is worth the ridicule. <laughs> but the idea beyond that is to be able to create the story that we want to live with for um, create a create a, a reality that actually works for everyone uh, even people who reject it it still works it's like that principle the idea of the first amendment of free speech should work for the bastards as well and you know let the truth duke it out I'm not a big fan of truth because it kind of shifts the sand. The truth is like sand in a desert. It keeps shifting. But hey, let's, I'll just say it. Let, let, let the bastards have 
the First Amendment, like we're not in the U.S., but I'm saying the idea the fundamentally it's I think ingrained in the Canadian Constitution as well that uh, democracies, generally speaking, what are called democracies. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't even say that name. You see that I I I implicitly confirm democracy by calling it democracies have the First Amendment and all this. This again is the man's story. I need to find my own story, but I'm using it for the time being in order to articulate this. Um, this is a pitfall in our understanding. It's like we believe to be making a, a, a valiant effort to undermine the bastards, but at the same time we contribute or we create credibility for them in using their words, their story. Which, you know, when people who really appreciate looking at art and, and making art and people who are uh, inventive, creative people have a way of siding with this notion of uh, making your own story, not regurgitating the shit we've been told. And on, on my last video and in response to Dean Harkness, Dean Harkness uh, suggests that all thoughts exist in an ether. It's not something that uh, we can actually come up with something original, but I suppose there is a way of telling a story that could still be original. Not that the idea itself would be original, like me saying now there is a, a subtle confirmation in repeating the words they have decided we need to focus on. Our, our, we are deer in the headlights whenever it comes to the, to the language that is being put in front of us. And by the way, it's getting more stupid all the time, which, which is part of it. You, you have to... You have to extract, like I said in my video, the soul out of everything, the same way you have to extract intelligent language out of a conversation as well and, and make it as simple as possible because uh, uh, the story is fundamentally not for those who are capable of critical thought, if you want to put it that way, but for those who are desperately lost in their own world of ignorance in terms of even understanding there's a story that is being forced down their throats. So the people who are essentially um, upset or irritated by any kind of alteration of their environment, mentally or physically, are the people that, are, that the stories are fundamentally being geared towards. Those who are capable of disseminating the, uh, the garbage which is most of it, and especially in culture now, if, if you want to get into this, how you can actually identify the depravities, what, are, what is considered to be contemporary culture. And there are so many aspects of being able to um, unravel this in, term, in terms of the representations that are, that are given, that are given to us, that are promoted, are fundamentally without heart, soul, intelligence thought there it's 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 ubiquitous it's ubiquitous in what is understood to be culture and don't know how far it extends into cultures that are rooted still in two three hundred year histories beyond that it gets rather nebulous I think my own background is uh, having grown up in Germany there was still uh, I, I think the Germans even post-war had still quite a connection to the clan, to the tribal nature of things, especially since it was agrarian mostly. I think Germany must have been prior uh, to the wars of 80% agrarian. It wasn't a city, not city dwellers. Now I think a lot of that has shifted. Uh, so there is, there is something to be said. I'm not going to trash and throw under the bus cultures in general, even though I find the repetitive nature and the kind of ritualistic behavior, even in entertaining dress and uh, uh, to some extent music. I'll have to think about it a little bit more be before I make uh, radical judgments on uh, verifiable videos where people say, you said this. Besides, I can change my mind tomorrow. So my, my, my point today, I'll leave it here. My point today is that there is a, a, a subtle confirmation always happening 
when we refer as the world the way we see it now primarily is through the eyes of healthy people being uh, nasty infectors to everyone this story right in relation to the beer virus madness insanity healthy people all of a sudden become threats this is and the the word that describes that circumstance that condition that condition where a healthy person is a threat to all life on earth to all human life on earth that condition that is referred to we should not repeat because by repeating it we confirm the lie so uh, the point is to invent if possible to the extent that it's possible Dean tell me otherwise to the extent that it's possible to invent the language through whether it's verbal or visual uh, culinary <laughs> um, on all levels political social religious the language needs to shift away from the mucky fucks who've got us like deer in a headlight and uh, we should not repeat the uh, repeat the story even on the most minute level to end it off i was i was listening to uh, andrew kaufman talk about the uh, the idea that the beer virus has never actually been physically isolated which uh to um any critical person who who believes in science the way governments always say uh, trust the science look at the science well the science needs to confirm this or deny it categorically showing showing it's not up to uh anybody anybody it's, it's some sort of a fallacy where you where you're asked to disprove a non-existence you can't do it that the people that claim to uh that claim this condition need to prove it that's the science so if in fact this beer virus has never been isolated in a human in a human host has never been isolated from a human host and recreated in the lab or whatever and proven to show the cause effect all that kind of stuff the technical stuff we're being gaslit on accepting something that actually doesn't exist and to repeat the story about the beer virus in any version whether to counter it or to confirm it in terms like uh, the uh, the hyenas that actually are promoting the entire uh, fairy tale nasty fairy tale this is something to be and I'm talking now to a very small percentage of the people because when we're when we're thinking about the internet and uh, the alternate internet it probably is only less than five percent what is let, let, let's take YouTube as an example it's probably less than five percent the alternate people 95 percent is complicit garbage whether it's music or stupid shit that is yeah you can watch it for entertainment purposes maybe and whatever that might be I, I don't I don't mind listening to music off the YouTube thing it's it's fabulous but I'm talking now specifically about this segment of the population that is keenly aware of our circumstance and subtly complying and contributing to our demise by not coming or not using their abilities and inventiveness creativeness to 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 shift the story again like i said a comedian making being able to ridicule something a painter an artist able to make an artwork that undermines I mean, maybe it's not the premise. Maybe it's not my premise. I the, the aesthetic values in a work have some uh, influence over me. I'm influenced by aesthetics, but my fundamental at this time of being alive, I make work that undermines this mindset, this conformist mindset. I don't like the regurgitations, and I'm I'm continuously pushing myself and uh, at times having a very hard time to to push my work into this uh, uh, sense of 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 newness of creating a story that's not anything like the crap that's been presented to me before 
I, I hope this makes sense because I was noodling on this when I was listening to Kaufman and even a guy I like, uh, and he, he physically says there is no such thing as the spear virus in, in a culture uh, from a human host. Um, and, uh, but in referencing, he uses their language. So th this is a problem for me. I, you can disagree with me. Um, I think, like I said, th this is a very small portion of even the alternative uh, thought process in people. Like if you're that sensitive, like I am, to the extent to which uh, the bastards are succeeding, um, it's a very small number of even alternative people that will actually be um, getting this point. I think it, it's it, it, it even even when I think about it, it's so uh, it's insidious. It's it's like when I when I think about it, I say to myself, "This is very insidious uh, for for this to be actually part of the strategy by the bastards to get us to to repeat the word over and over and over again." I well, I said it once in this uh, video, but it's important not to put it in the title, uh, but have a language that identifies it without using their language, if you know what I mean. And my last point, my last point is, to what extent will this succeed? I think will be based on our immediate physical environment, if it's not too late already, in the sense that Many have suggested that the injections contain rather dubious ingredients that could possibly alter against our will the way we behave. So if we get to that point in the majority of the population, and I, I, I think that, uh, I don't know, worldwide have 50% of the people on Earth have they taken some version of this, even in terms of testing the... Uh, that swab technology uh, apparently leaves residues. Don't do any of it. Obviously, it's like this is very uh, this is very sinister. But I'm not even going into that research. I'm just saying how would how would this um, how would this how will this ultimately unfold? I think about that. How will this ultimately unfold? Will it be the the brave new world that um, has virtually extracted all that is of value to a human being or will the resistance out of this very small group grow when the physical domain the physical world around us begins no longer to function uh, well i've never been part of anything where the physical world doesn't function i've not been in a war zone i imagine uh, Bosnia Herzegovina in the 90s, early 90s, when all that stuff, I mean, uh, people who had uh, a very comfortable life, everything was turned upside down. I'm not sure whether that entrenched that group of people into their tribalism and made it worse, or whether that liberated people. And on a large scale, maybe the ultimate, the ultimate goal is a total mayhem in some form or other, where people get entrenched in this tribalism, which plays right into into the bastards' uh, uh, storyline. So, uh, yeah, don't. Uh, from now on, I would suggest don't even repeat the word that they would like us to use. Uh, the uh, the descriptor of uh, healthy people being threats to each other, the word that describes that condition. It'll go down in history. Uh, it can be repeated when we've come through this. I think we'll come through this. When we come through this, that word will describe the madness of healthy people being a threat, like in terms of um, the medical condition. Like a medical, it's it's a medical condition. Being healthy is a medical condition. It's a it's an adverse medical condition now, uh, under the uh, under the new parameters, under the uh, language that is being presented to us that we're supposed to accept. So don't don't even say the word. And for 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 Kaufman, I, I as as true as the things he says, there is a subtle compliance. I can't I 
Like I said, it's a very small number of people that would understand this. Anyway, I'll leave it here.